Dear friends, good evening. I'm Liao Jinjong from Angel Yeast Company Limited. I'm so glad to be here to show you the process of making whole wheat crispy chestnut bread. Seven aspects will be shared today. One, characteristics of the bread. Two, recipe. Three, making fermented dough. Four, mixing the main dough. Five, basic fermentation and cut and shaping. Six, final fermentation and decoration before baking. Seven, control of baking time and temperature. In terms of characteristics, from the appearance, this bread has typical characteristics of European style bread. From the taste, chestnut kernels are added to the dough to enrich the monotonous taste of traditional European style bread. From the recipe, rich raw materials are used. Chestnut kernels and stout are added to replace part of the water in the recipe. We also add rye flour, whole wheat flour, an appropriate amount of honey, and a little butter to the flour to make the bread more nutritious and taste richer. Now, look at the recipe with two parts. First, the fermented dough, in which the baking percentage of bread flour is 30%, angel fresh yeast 0.3%, and water 30%. In the main dough, the baking percentage of bread flour is 40%, baked dream whole wheat flour 15%, low gluten flour 15%, and flour 100%. The percentage of flour is taken as 100%. That of all other materials is based on the amount of flour. 1% angel fresh yeast is add. Then, 0.5% angel LD500, a bread improver for French bread is added. To make the bread more crispy, 3% honey and butter are added respectively. Of course, this is not necessary. If you want to make pure sugar and oil-free bread, you may add a little more water. We add 30% stout, 30% chestnut kernels, 300 grams, and 1.8% salt, 18 grams. Now, all raw materials are added to this main dough. Baking percentage is an intuitive way to show bread recipe. Let's move on. First of all, making the fermented dough. The key is the control of temperature and fermentation time of the dough. And how to preserve it if it is not used up. Let's watch a video about the process of making the fermented dough. We need to measure the water temperature first. The current room temperature is only 18 degrees Celsius. We need water at about 30 degrees Celsius. Pour the water into the mixing bucket first. If you pour the flour first, part of the flour may stay at the bottom of the bucket and cannot be stirred up. Then we put angel fresh yeast. If it is unavailable, you can use dry yeast of half the amount of fresh yeast. Then. Put these three materials directly into the mixer. Stir slowly at first. Never stir too fast at the beginning. Otherwise, the flour will easily scatter into the air. When it is stirred to the extent that no obvious particles exist, increase the mixing speed to make the dough more uniform. Okay, the total mixing time is about three to four minutes. Of course, it doesn't matter if you stir it for more or less time, but we need to pay attention to two main points. First, no flour particles. Second, complete disillusion of yeast. One more important thing is the temperature of the freshly mixed dough. It is generally around 26 degrees Celsius. Then, we seal and wrap it with preservative film. Put it at 18 degrees Celsius directly for fermentation for about 12 hours. This is its state after 12 hours. Its pH is now around 5.2, and the temperature is 12.2 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at the state of the fermented dough. There are a lot of bubbles in it. This is the production of the fermented dough. Let's move on. For the mixing of the main dough, the first point is the order of material adding. It is important to know which materials should be added first. Second, 
Pay attention to the hardness. Mixing degree and temperature control of the dough. These are very important for the main dough. Let's explain while watching the video. First of all, we mix the bread flour, cake flour, Baker Dream whole wheat flour, and angel yeast in advance. We don't need much flour. The mixer is relatively large, so we mix the dry materials in advance. What are the wet materials? First, a little bit of honey, water, and stout are mixed in advance to make the mixing more efficient. We put the dry and wet materials and the fermented dough into the mixer. Stir them at a slow speed for three minutes to make them evenly mixed. When there is no dry powder in the mixer, we start to check the hardness of the dough. There is no instrument to measure whether the, the dough is soft or hard. Different requirements are set for different kinds of bread. So we judge whether the dough is soft or hard based on our experience. The operation difficulty of dough is different, so the final judgment differs. We can see that the salt particles are a bit coarse. Therefore, no gluten will be formed at the beginning of mixing. After all the materials are evenly mixed, we choose to stir them fast in order to form gluten. After two minute fast stirring, let's check the gluten of the dough. Obviously, both the elasticity and ductility are much better than before. Now, we add a little butter. The hardness of the butter should be controlled. It must be easily broken by hand. If the butter is hard, it will hardly dissolve. We stir the butter into the dough at a slow speed when it is added to the mixer. Let's check it again. After the butter is completely dissolved into the dough, the gluten of the dough has almost formed. Let's take a look again. The dough membrane is a bit thick and not very even. Now I choose to stir it slowly for a while. But we have to keep the time under control. If stirred for too long, the dough will be destroyed irreversibly. When checking the degree of mixing, put a little bit of dry powder on our hands to prevent them from sticking to the dough. How about the dough? It's still a little thick. Not enough. Let's stir slowly for another minute. The mixed dough should give a soft and comfortable feel. Let's take a look at the dough. The membrane we pull out is relatively thin and even, with a very smooth crack. We take this dough out of the mixer, put it on the operation table, and spread it out evenly. Then, spread the chestnuts on the dough. Our recipe contains 30% chestnut kernels. To ensure the integrity of these particles, we put the kernels into the dough manually. Let's roll it up like this. Then fold it for three times to mix the dough more evenly with the kernels. We sprinkle some flour on the surface of the dough and then thin it. Now, the room temperature is relatively low. So we put the dough on the baking tray and take it to the fermenting box for basic fermentation. Let's take a look again. The dough is cut and shaped after basic fermentation. The key of basic fermentation is fermentation temperature and time control. We can see from the first picture on the left that the temperature of the dough is 25.6 degrees Celsius, which is suitable for the growth and reproduction of yeast in the dough. The dough is fine when fermented to about 1.3 to 1.5 times of the original volume. The temperature is generally controlled at about 26 to 28 degrees Celsius, which must be well matched with the time of fermentation. For humidity, it's okay as long as the surface of the dough does not crust or dry out. 
Then, the dough is cut into 400 grams each. Then, we put it into the rattan frame for fermentation with the closed end upward. Let's look at its cut and shaping through a video. Pour the fermented dough onto the operation table. It looks very soft and fluffy. We cut the dough into 400 grams each. Pay special attention here. The dough is directly shaped into a circle. So we make it into a circle directly when cutting. Look carefully at how the fermented dough is shaped. First, pat off the uneven large bubbles in the dough. To the extent that the dough is more fluffy, First, fold it and keep the upper part larger than the lower part so as to cover it. Then, fold it again. Still make the upper part cover the lower part. Let's see if it's equivalent to a quarter of a circle, like a sector. Then, turn the rim into a circle like this. To make the dough bind more tightly, we tap it gently like this. We usually put these cut pieces into the dough. This is how a French dough is shaped into a circle. Take a look at the bottom of the dough. It is a French dough. There are only a few flexible materials herein, such as sugar and oil. So this dough is fairly elastic, but with poor ductility. So we can't knead the dough too much when shaping. Otherwise, it's easy to break the gluten of the dough. Put the round dough directly on the fermentation board. We put three on each fermentation board. This is the basic fermentation, cut, and shaping of the dough. The picture on the right shows that I put the dough into the fermentation basket. In the video, I put the dough directly on the fermentation board. Both are okay, but if it is placed in the fermentation basket, the closed end is upward. If it's not on the fermentation board, the closed end is downward. After the dough is shaped, let's make a crispy sauce to spread on the surface of the dough. As shown in the picture on the left, the ingredients are first rye flour and then beer. Then add a little salt, sugar, and yeast. Salt and sugar are added to flavor the crispy sauce. Yeast catalyzes the dough in fermentation and makes it a bit more crispy. The key of the dough membrane is the consistency of the batter and the temperature and degree of fermentation. The temperature and degree of fermentation are mainly to control the fermentation of the batter and make the final taste more crispy. For the consistency of the batter, it's to control the size of a crack on the final surface of the bread. If the batter is too thin, the cracks on the surface will be finer. If too thick, the cracks will become very coarse. Let's look at the preparation of the batter through the video. The liquid material is beer. First, we add a little salt, sugar, and yeast to the beer to dissolve. The room temperature is relatively low, so I heated the beer slightly. It is also to make the batter better fermented and more fluffy. We stir the batter and observe its consistency. Let's move on to the final fermentation of the fermented dough and its decoration before baking. So, to what extent does it ferment? Generally, the dough has batter on the surface. It will expand more in the oven than that without batter. The surface will not coagulate very soon. Thus, it is more conducive to its expansion. For example, generally, pineapple bread will be fermented less than common bread. The pineapple surface will not coagulate quickly in the oven. For common bread, its surface will coagulate as soon as it is put into the oven. And it will not expand much after heating. So it's very important to judge the degree of fermentation. Second, it's to control the amount of crispy batter on the surface. Let's watch a video. First, the fermented dough is about twice the original size. This is the fermented crispy batter we can see a lot of bubbles in it. Such batter will taste more crispy. If less fermented, it will taste harder. I put a scale here to show you 
how much batter is put on each piece of bread. First, put the bread on the scale. Let's deduct the tear. There is about 60 grams batter put on each piece of bread. 44 grams is not enough. Let's go on. About 60 grams is okay. For each piece of the bread, we first squeeze all the batter required and then spread it evenly. It's just okay. A little bit more for the last one. Now, we spread the batter evenly with a spatula. Okay, just like this. Try to spread the batter as lower as possible. The more evenly you spread it, the more uniform the cracks will be. Then, we sieve a layer of bread flour onto the surface. The thickness must be even. Let's move on to baking. Baking temperature and time should be well matched. Bread type, baking time, and temperature all should be considered to achieve the desired taste. There are other requirements to consider. For example, European style bread. It contains less sugar, so we usually bake it at a higher temperature. It's bigger, so we bake it for a longer time. Such 400 gram bread is generally baked for 25 to 30 minutes. So, at the time of 10, 15, and 20 minutes from the beginning of baking, we need to observe its color and determine the temperature required. Let's watch the video. We put the decorated bread into the oven. Here, I use the fermentation board to do so. Let's take a look at the temperature. The upper limit is set at 240 degrees Celsius and the lower at 220 degrees Celsius. First, we need to use steam. Here, attention should be paid to the amount of steam. The steam metering of different ovens is different. Some in seconds, some in milliliters. When steam appears on the surface of the oven door, it's okay. If the steam generated in the oven is relatively coarse, it should be generated in stages. Do not make the steam spouted for four seconds at once. Water droplets will then spray easily onto the surface of the dough, which looks bad and makes the dough messy easily. I set the time to 15 minutes mainly to judge by the coloring of the bread surface. And see if the temperature needs to be adjusted. After baked for about 7 minutes, the bread is basically shaped, with cracks formed. Then, some water vapor appears on the surface of the glass, as the vapor in the oven is relatively sufficient. Strictly speaking, maybe the volume of the dough is a little bit too larger, so the fermentation time would have been shortened a little. The first 15 minutes of baking are up. Let's look at the color of the dough. The top is slightly yellowed. Let's bake for another 10 minutes. I'm afraid that the lower limit, 220 degrees Celsius, is a little bit too high. So I adjust it to 210 degrees Celsius. The upper limit is adjusted to 230 degrees Celsius. It is a safer approach, since the bread is too big. If the temperature is too high, the baking time will be shorter. I'm afraid that the bread will not be baked thoroughly and will be sticky to the teeth. Or, I lower the temperature a little bit and prolong the baking time a little bit. Waiting for the bread to come out is a happy but suffering process. If it is in the state you imagined, you will be very happy and relieved. But if it looks different from what you imagined, you might be disappointed. Baked a little bit drier, it will taste crispier. We can see the color of the bread through the glass, which is slightly white. Let's open the door and take a look. The color of the two in the further side is quite good. During baking, sometimes, the steam is exhausted in the last five minutes to make the bread surface crispier. Look, the bread is baked. We turn off the oven after baking. That's all for today's course. Thank you very much for watching. There is a lot of professional baking knowledge. Thank you for watching.